Hello the bodies, welcome back to my channel. This is episode 10. This week I actually closed the curtains because I see there's such a glare coming in here that um, it's hard to see. But I wanted to start off this week by also sharing a lesson I learned. And that was setting unrealistic goals for myself. Especially in this time where we're just so busy and things are just, it can be a bit overwhelming. Immigration new home, new people, new work, and it was my hope to have Joseph, Mary and baby Jesus done for Christmas Day, and here I am a few days before Christmas, and not even Joseph has done, and I think it's partly because I was pushing myself to finish him, and then I sort of deterred myself on my own, <laughs> away from him, but I do endeavor to still actually make the nativity scene, but I think if I set more of a realistic goal and I do one of the nativity scene pieces each month, next year I can have a full set and actually appreciate it better. I have my list of notes today <laughs> so that I don't miss out on anything because I get caught up in talking and then I forget what I originally wanted to talk about and then it all goes down the drain path. So that was the first one. And... I'm sorry that I, I I don't have it to show you. I, uh, it's starting to take form, but it, he's just not there. He's missing too many little pieces. But um, as soon as he is done, I'm going to share him. And I'm going to share more happiness and opposed to <laughs> poor Joseph that's not made yet. So, the second one. Oh, yes. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, this video most likely will be posted just after Christmas, in between Christmas and New Year. So, a belated Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I thought it's best to, with the New Year coming and me battling with my time management, to actually go back to the book. And for me, that is because I'm a list person, I'm a diary person, and I've gone off track with that. So, I'm hoping if I bring it back into my life, like it normally always is, I'll be able to become better at being more organized, more detailed, and obviously more focused and work on the time management. So this is 2022. This came with from South Africa. I had it from 2021, mid-year, and it's, it's come this way, this far. And uh, I love the color, gold, blue, beautiful. But I did bring something with me in my suitcase that a dear friend of mine gave. And um, she bought it as my farewell gift. Which yeah, brings back sad memories. I was trying to think if it was something else or if it was Christmas. No, it was my farewell gift. And she gifted me with this. And this is a Joyce Meyer one. That's beautiful. Louisa. You lovely lady. She also left me a beautiful note and uh, it came with and I'm going to start filling it and I'm going to start working on 2023. So again, thank you my Mikey. That diary is going a long way and it's going to help me get to where I need to be in the next couple of months. Next one, ooh, my pin cushion pro uh, progress and this is the cross stitch. I must say guys, the first couple of stitches I had to undo. And it was because I thought, oh well, instruction said top over to bottom and then back over. Obviously, yeah, we don't always listen. Had to redo it. But I'm actually very impressed. Look how all oh, the pin is still stuck there. Look how beautiful that is. It's nowhere near finished. I'll show you the actual whole flower. Nowhere near finished, but how stunning is that? Just that little bit. I will take a better photo for everybody to see. And obviously the mess of twine at the back. How stunning. I must say, this is really such a lovely craft. I can understand why people get involved with cross stitch and they get involved with embroidery. It is really, really lovely. However, crochet is still my number one, guys. Still my number one. And I'm pretty sure, let me put that down, I'm pretty sure it's still going to be my number one for many years to come. These are simply side hobbies. So, something I found this morning actually, I thought, might as well share. Another Kmart find, it is a punch needle kit. 
How's that? Two dollar in the bargain bin. I think it's because the box is a bit broken. I don't care if the box is broken. Two dollar bargain fine. Again, something to work on. Or with needle, yarn, wool. You can always bring something else to the table. So, that one aside. Next on my list. Burberry the sheep. If you followed me from the start, you'll see that I worked on my first actual Amigurumi toy in New Zealand was for me. It was Burberry the sheep. I'm very proud of my sheep. And I said, I don't know if I wanted to make another one because when you're working with the hair, although he looked beautiful, I will put another photo in for reference. Just so if you're new to the channel, you can see how beautiful my sheep was. Um, but... Peter, my husband, came to me and he said, he's, he's got a secret sense at work and he needs a gift. So I said, don't worry, I've got to find you a lovely gift for the lady. I found him what I thought was a beautiful gift. And he turned and said, as nice as that is, how about your sheepy? And I didn't want to let him go. But he does, again, he doesn't ask me for much when it comes to my crochet work. And I thought, you know what? That's a special gift. So his secret sense at work got Burberry the sheep for her Christmas present. He was very excited. I was not so excited, but I became very excited. And the fact that I got to share something of mine, it pays it all. So happy, unhappy, happy. So I will be updating my Instagram profile if you'd like to go and see, if you'd like to follow. That way I can, when I do post a video or anything that I find, I can share it straight away. But I do have to update the page. So when this video comes up, it will be updated by then. Um, I can't say I'm huge on Facebook, but there is a page. Again, it's very old. It's years old. And um, I want something new and fresh. Next on my list, uh, next, next, Ooh. games. So kids games. This is something I actually discovered originally when I was in South Africa. And it's because my mother-in-law crocheted granny squares. And I'm talking, I'm trying to think of size now, about two handfuls worth of a square. So a nice big, nothing fancy granny square. And she did this in all different colors to put together and make a blanket. But with the yarn she used, she used Charity by, I think it's an L yarn. Some of the colors, and I did pick this up when I originally used it when I started Amigurumi. They had such a beautiful range. But the thickness of the yarn differed from color to color. So when she put the blocks up next to each other, they did not line because they were different thickness. And this is something, this is a lesson I learned the hard way when I bought all my colors of charity. And that is, you've got to find the right yarn. And you've got to find it and you've got to stick to it. By all means, try different things, try different patterns. But always have a go-to and have it in colors. That was a big lesson. So that's lesson two that I'm sharing that I had to learn. Anyway, sitting in the lounge, my daughter found these squares and we started putting them on the floor and it became a game. And the reason I'm mentioning it's a game, it's kids on holiday. If you'd like to try the game yourself, I've had a bit of fun with Evelyn myself with the colors that I do have. You can make a big granny square, place them all over the house or all over the yard or However you want to put it. I'd say keep it inside because, I mean, you don't want to damage your granny squares outside. And you play movable twister. And you can say left hand on the blue or right foot on the yellow. It's harder if they're smaller. Or when it came to Evelyn, we put them right next to each other to make sort of a formation. And she hopped from one to the next. Or I said fine yellow, yellow. Fine red, red. She ran. She found them. So I'm quite, I'm quite impressed that uh, she is that good. Just feeling a little bit proud of my child right now. <laughs> but it's something fun that you can do, and it involves yarn. I will also put a photo of what we did. I took out all my little balls 
of Crots and Rainbow and she is naming the colors now. And when she names the color right, she gets to take the ball, put it in a bucket, and then the ones in the bucket, we count it. These are simple, silly little games, but I'm sharing something that I get to, that I have a passion for with my daughter. And that makes a world of difference for me. So, little graces go a long way. Next one. Again, looking at my list, I don't completely go off track. My spookdookies. For those of you who don't know, it's a little color blank. It's a cuddle blankie. A lot of people use these um, tiley nappies or a terry towel. This is one with an embroidery on to wipe up drool, spit, any form. In South Africa, it's a very common practice that you give it to newborns as a very special gift because it's handmade. And um, yeah, you just, you make them pretty. You make it pretty. And you crochet around the borders. The crochet that you use, like I've said before, it's all up to you. It's how you want to do it. It's what you want to do. But with it, you get to play a bit. It's basically like some sort of uh, border blanket stitch. And I'm going to follow up this video with just some tips on how you start, how I did the stitch. Just to give you an update because I did see that some people have been commenting, sending me messages. Again, thank you so much for the love and support. I appreciate every single one of them. So I'm going to show that with the next one. Uh, let's go on down my list. Yes. So things inside a crochet bag. Uh, everybody has their own little twitches and glitches. Everybody has their little kit that they might travel with. Something that I've come to find in New Zealand is these babies. So before having a toddler or a child, I was big on carrying a small hand sanitizer in my crochet bag or a little packet of wet wipes, purely because if you touch your work, you don't want any form of residue on your hands. You don't want to feel your hands have got a sticky or dirty. You want to make sure your hands are clean. And also, if you've got a residue, it, it, it's irritating. It's very irritating. I don't know if you guys feel the same or you've had the same instances. So, even before Evelyn came, it was something I had with me. And now I've still got it. And this is a company that's in New Zealand. It is called Purely Baby. They do Purely Baby and Thinkwise. They also have a, I think the mother company is called Raynard Health Supplies. And they have these little things and it is it's alcohol free and it's a little foam let me show you what it looks like check it smells lovely i think the one from Raynard has a different scent to this one this one smells like uh, you know baby powder lovely gives such a nice fresh feeling on your hands no stickiness no residue so i'll take a photo and post it as well this is purely baby this is the foaming hand sanitizer here are their little wet wipes because even though I'm an adult and I can be quite messy, a toddler will always outdo me. Always handy. So just sharing little tips that I found. They also have these amazing wet wipe holders. Um, I need to see what the real name is for it. I think it's a skip hop go. I will find it and I will share it. And this hooks onto her pram, hooks in the car, it goes everywhere and nice and sturdy, keeps the wet wipes moist. Also, if she decides to chuck it, it's not going to break. Also, we don't have any bag tears or anything like that. So, it's nice. I can make my own mixture in it. They do have other items where you can do it, but I will share the link just so you can see. Uh, something that also happened this this week is we got a visit in our office from a company called the Potter Brothers, if I'm not mistaken. They are basically, I'm trying to think of the right word. Anyway, I will post these sites, I will post the items for those who are in New Zealand. They can have a look-see. They make sweets, as in chocolates, marshmallows, and uh, I must say, I took a few variants and they are not going to last the week. So I'm going to share it. 
I don't get any formal endorsement just to put it out there of the sort from any of this. I'm just simply sharing things that have become comfort to me in New Zealand and I hope to share it with people all over the place. So if you are in New Zealand, go have a look see at the Potter Brothers. Also at Purely Baby. Lovely, lovely stuff. They have a normal range. They also have a biodegradable range. So, awesome stuff. Moving on. Make sure I've got everything off my list. Yes. I think I'm actually done. Apologies for that. Just wanted to make sure that I've got it all right. Following this, I'm going to show you more details of this book. Though. But thank you very much for joining me. And until next year, which is in less than a week. Ciao, ciao, everybody. Thank you.